Good morning, guys. Just having some coffee on this fine Tuesday morning with my husband's mug. I'm Jamie from Be Kind Family Farm, and this is our channel, Be In Blue. Um, and it is going to be a gorgeous 70 degrees out today, so I figured it'd be a great time to talk about flowers, my favorite topic ever. Um, and I thought in particular I'd talk about dahlias. Um, I'll be planting my dahlia tubers in another few months. They're warm weather, so you have to wait till all danger of frost has passed, so I'll probably wait until the end of April. Um, but today I thought I'd talk about storing dahlias. This is typically something I should probably have talked about in the fall because that's when you dig them up and store them. But I figure you can have this information for this coming season. So when you buy dahlias, and I recommend buying dahlias from a reputable um, company, uh, I would not buy from Lowe's or Walmart. Um, you can get something called Leafy Goal and it can spread to all your dahlia tubers and you don't want that. Um, you definitely wanna go, wanna stay away from the big box stores, if at all possible. So when you get a dahlia tuber, this is what it looks like minus um, all the peat moss on it. And you will plant them after all danger of frost is passed. And you'll bloom, you'll get your flowers, and then after your first frost in the fall, you, you can, you have the option of digging them up and dividing them. Now, if you are like zone seven and below, so like North Carolina, Georgia, Florida, down in the warmer climates, you can leave them in the ground. We're right on the, um, we're right on the border as far as being able to leave them in the ground. Um, if we get really, really cold, it can um, kill them and they won't come back. So I choose to dig them up. So the benefits of digging them up are, you are, for sure to have some for the following year in case it gets too cold and you can get more. So let's say you plant this and you go and you dig your tubers up in the fall, you will get, and I'm just going to kind of show you, give you an idea of what it would look like by holding these together because I don't have a, I don't even know that I have a picture, but you will get a clump of dahlias that kind of look like that and they'll all be connected. You'll have anywhere from like five to 20 tubers. So out of one tuber that you planted in the fall, when you dig them up, you'll have something like this, like a giant clump. And then you can um, dig them up, wash them, divide them. I'm not really gonna talk a lot about that today. Uh, I'm just gonna talk about what you do once they're divided. So I'll do a video on how to divide them um, when the time comes, probably in um, October or November. So once you have your dahlias divided and all cleaned up, some people leave the dirt on them, some people leave them whole. Some people do not even divide them, they just store them whole. I prefer to, to divide mine um, because when you have big clumps like this, you're gonna, it's gonna take up a lot of space um, to store them. So what I do is I dig them up and then I just get, Like these rubber maids from you can get from Walmart or Lowe's or wherever. You can get these and then get some peat moss. And you are going to take your dahlias and you're going to put a layer of peat moss on the bottom. And then you're gonna layer your tubers on top, layer of peat moss, and then a layer of tubers. The trick is, and you can see, and I'll show you in this small one. The trick is to keep your dahlias at about 45, 50 degrees. My root cellar, it's kind of warm. I think it, it's probably about 50, which is why mine are sprouting. So really the two key things to storing your dahlias, and, and I'm no expert, this is only my second season storing them. But my first season I had 100, I think I had 100 tubers, maybe 80 to 100, and I think I only lost two. It was crazy, I couldn't believe it. So this is a really great method. Um, so you want your medium, your, um, peat moss, you don't want it to be super dry, but you don't, if it's too dry, they will shrivel up, um, your, your tubers will shrivel up and they'll, they'll be no good. I don't know if I have any in here like that. I do not. Um, if I find one like that, I'll show you. But you also don't want the medium to be too wet. If it's too wet, they will rot. Um. So let's check out some of my tubers. 
These all look really good. I've got, I think, five of these, though. I think I have 250 to 300 tubers total. But you can kind of tell. Now, this one doesn't look like it's doing anything right now. It's hard to see. Um, usually, right on the top there, you'll start to see some kind of, you'll, the eyes, you'll see some growth. And I don't see anything on that one, but that does not mean anything. Um, I've planted ones like that, and they're fine. So you want to keep them um, in a cool place, 40 to 50 degrees. Um, you can see these are growing. <laughs> you can take cuttings off of these um, and get even more dahlias, but I don't really um, have an urge to do that. I have plenty here, um, but you can do that as well, but I'll just pinch these off. Um, and they will re-sprout. So, layer of peat moss, lay your tubers, don't stack them on top of each other. Another layer of peat moss, tubers, and then another layer of peat moss. Layer it like that. Make sure the um, peat moss is damp, but not super wet. And then check on them. Check on them, you know, once a month, I would say. I don't really check on mine too often. If the medium is too dry, go ahead and take just like a little squirt bottle like this and just kind of spray around until you, because this is, mine is a little dry. And then just be sure to tuck them back underneath all that peat moss. Like so. Make sure they're covered. And then I'll go I'll go through this one here and I'll spray. And then I have a few more downstairs and I'll check them all. And then I'll just put the lids back on. And give them a few more months until I can plant. But that's it. That is how I store my dahlia tubers. Um, there are many different ways to do it. I've watched a lot of different YouTube videos on um, how to do it. Some people wrap them in saran wrap um, and store them that way. Um, I'm trying to think of other ways that I've seen. I can't really recall offhand, but um, this is what works for me. Like I said, I had really good success with it the year before, and it looks like this year they're all doing really, really well. So, um, yeah, so you can essentially... Order, let's say you order, you know, three dahlia tubers. Um, for instance, you can go to Swan Island Dahlias. Um, they're a reputable uh, tuber dealer, and they have beautiful dahlias. They're a little more expensive than what you're going to see at Walmart or Lowe's, but don't be tempted by those prices. Um, dahlias are definitely an investment. So if you buy three from Swan Island, and let's say they're $6 a piece, um, those three tubers, if you dig them up in the fall, could turn into 18 tubers. And then those 18 tubers could turn into 60 tubers. So if you keep digging up and dividing them, um, you could have hundreds. It's kind of like beekeeping. <laughs> Start with one hive, end up with 100. Um, so that's it. That Those are the basics on... Um, storing them. If you have any questions, you can comment below, or if you have a different way that you do it, that you feel works really well, I'd love, I'd really be interested to hear on how you store yours. Um, like I said, I'll do a video on dividing them in the fall. That is a whole nother ball game. It's a, it's a tricky, I had a hard time with it. Um, my first year, my mom helped me actually dig them up and we were dividing them and I just felt like I was butchering them. Um, Cause you have to kind of look for little eyes and like kind of have like one to two eyes per tuber and kind of cut. And it sounds really easy, right? It sounds like you just go and you see the eyes and you cut the tubers off and it's not, it's not that simple. So we were um, dividing them and I thought for sure we were just completely butchering them. Um, but I kept them, I said, you know what? I'm not going to throw them out because I was so tempted to throw them out. I was so frustrated. 
but I kept them. I threw in some Rubbermaids with some peat moss, and like I said, I only lost like two. I could, I was floored. So I guess I know what I'm doing. <laughs> but that is it. So just a short little video on how to do that. Um, something for you to think about if you do have some dahlias. Now, if you have dahlias from like Lowe's or or Walmart, I'm not telling you if you have some in your garden now and they're coming up to like throw them out and freak out, but they can come from the store with leafy gall, which you do not want. Um, I can do another video about that and how to identify it. Um, but it's detrimental to dahlias and it spreads quickly. And then you have to isolate your tubers and throw the bad ones out and it's just a whole mess. I haven't seen leafy gall in any of mine. I do not have any dahlias from any big box stores. All mine came from reputable uh, local places within the United States. So that is it. Um, like I said, if you got any questions, message me. Um, yeah, so that's it. Oh, another thing too, when you store them, it is a great idea and I did not do this this past fall. I didn't feel good. I'm having some issues with my shoulder and I was just trying to get it done. But you should, should um, label them with like a piece of tape and permanent marker. Um, what kind of dahlia you're digging up and dividing and um, storing. So that way you know what you're planting. Me, I've got like 250, 300 tubers and I don't know what is what. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm not selling tubers and whatever, so I'm not too concerned about it, but it would be nice to know what is what. So if you can find the time to make that extra step and do that, that'd be a good idea. So that's it. Um, like I said, comment below like, subscribe. Um, I'm new to the YouTube world. I'm, uh, I'm a homesteader. I'm not, a, I'm not really a YouTuber. So this is all new to me. Um, even speaking in front of a camera or even just the tech side of it. I'm, I'm learning. So bear with me. I've got a lot to share. I feel like, uh, my husband and I have been homesteading for 20 years in some way, shape or form. We lived off the grid. Um, we were in Mother Earth News Magazine as Homesteaders of the Year. Um, we've, we've done a little bit of everything. We beekeep, we can, we butcher chickens, we raise pigs. Um, we sell at the market, flowers, honey. I make soap. Uh, I do a little bit of everything, and I, it's just something I love. It's, um, it's a passion of mine, so I thought, um, what a great way to be able to share what I love um, by doing a YouTube channel and sharing it with all you guys. So, all right, well, it's gonna be gorgeous out. I'm gonna go sit with my cup of coffee on the front porch and uh, soak it up, so. All right, like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye.